A uh, good evening, everyone. We'll call this meeting of the Sebastian City Council to order. Uh, please stand for an invocation by uh, Pastor Joe Maldonado from the Lakeside Fellowship Church and uh, pledge allegiance to be led by uh, Council Member Bob McPartland. Okay. Um, Jerome, would you like to uh, do an invocation for us? Sure. Dear Lord, thank you for bringing us here today to conduct the business of our city. Please help us to be mindful in what we say, to be keen in our listening, and to do whatever we can for the betterment of our city. In your name we pray, amen. amen. I pledge, I pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag, flag of the United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Roll call, please, Sally. Mayor Gilmore? Here. Vice Mayor Adams? Here. Council Member Coy? Here. Council Member Hill? Here. Council Member McPartland? Here. Thank you. Are there any agenda modifications? Seeing none, we have a, uh, an unveiling. Now. This is a proud moment for Sebastian. Uh, we have something to unveil for everyone. And uh, in recognition of the year 2000, 76 years after our incorporation of, in 1924 as the town of Sebastian, and 75 years after our 1925 reincorporation as the city of Sebastian, as the world celebrated the new millennium, the city entered into a contract with Kurt Oxford. Uh, and his business, Kurt Oxford Woodcarver, incorporated to, to create a new city entry sign to welcome visitors to Sebastian. Through Kurt Oxford's workmanship and artistry, he created a beautiful seal with a pelican in flight for the city of Sebastian, home of Pelican Island, which was placed on signs at the entrances to the city and have been, since been used throughout the city and all of our parks and facilities to represent us, the city of Sebastian. The photos on the screen above show the 2000 dedication of the first city entry sign in the summer of 2000, as attended by Kurt Oxford with former council members, Mayor Walter Barnes, council members Joe Barzak and Jim Hill, former charter officers, uh, city manager Terrence Moore, city clerk Kay O'Halloran, city attorney Rich Stringer, former county commissioners Fran Adams and Ruth Stanbridge, current Indian River County tax collector, Carolyn Jean Jordan, with unveiling assistance by Public Works Director Terry Hill and Golf Course Manager Pat Surgeon. <clears throat> City Council on October 11, 2000 adopted Resolution R0043, officially adopting the new City Seal and logo for the City of Sebastian to be effective December 17, 2000. In that resolution, Kurt Oxford donated the design copyright to the City of Sebastian. Mr. Oxford created a design for the City Council Chambers, Dias area in 2007, but during a time of economic downturn throughout the county uh, in the country, the city wasn't able to make that happen. Recently, it was brought to the attention of the City Council that Sebastian was the only local government in Indian River County that did not have its city or county seal in its chambers. Staff contacted Mr. Oxford to find out how this could be made possible, and he provided the design he created in 2007. And in discussion with the city manager and city clerk, was requested to move forward to create and install it. Tonight, we officially unveil the new City of Sebastian Chamber seal and thank Kurt Oxford for his creativity and his excellence. Thank you. Uh, 
I thought it was eight years, and it was eight years. Wow, eight years. Hey, you know, City of Sebastian has been very kind to me, allowing me to do some great work. I thank you guys so much for that. And um, this was, this is something I wanted to do a long time ago, and uh, definitely on my bucket list. I want to thank everybody who allowed me to do it and, and uh, assisted me and helped me to do it. And uh, I'm very proud and uh, very honored to be able to have done it for you guys. Thank you so much. Up next, we have a presentation by uh, Ms. McNamara. Would you come on down, Judy? Uh, this is from the Sebastian River Art Club, presentation of a check to the city of Sebastian. Come on down, tell us what it's for. Hi, I'm Judy McNamara, president of the Sebastian River Art Club. Um, we are very happy that the city of Sebastian lets us use the facility that we use. Um, we are not the only ones that are uh, using this facility, but we're ones that want to donate some money right now to the city of Sebastian to help recoup some of the expenses. We really need some chairs and we would like this to go for that if possible, but uh, it's open and it's a check for $500 from the Sebastian River Art Club. All right, we now have a uh, um Proclamation, dump the pump. And this is a little bit late, but um, anyway, this was for June 18th. Karen it Beals. is. Karen, oh yeah, come on, Karen. This is a, a proclamation for the 10th annual National Dump the Pump Day in the city of Sebastian, whereas June 18th, 2015 marked the 10th annual National Dump the Pump Day as a day that encourages people to ride public transportation as public transit powers community growth by driving economic development and revitalizing neighborhoods. And whereas every $1 invested in public transportation generates approximately $4 in economic returns, and whereas public transportation is a $61 billion in industry that puts people to work, directly employing nearly 400,000 people, and creating hundreds of thousands of private sector jobs. And whereas nearly 60% of public transit tri trips are work commutes and people who ride public transportation can save on average more than $9,000 per year based on today's gas prices, the cost of owning a car and the average unreserved uh, parking rate. And whereas US public transportation use saves 4.2 billion gallons of fuel annually, Transportation use in 498 urban areas in the United States saved 865 million hours annually in travel time and 450 million gallons of fuel. And without public transportation, annual congestion costs would have risen by nearly $21 billion from 121 to 142 billion. Now therefore, I, Richard H. Gilmore, by virtue of the authority vested in me as mayor of the city of Sebastian and on behalf of the Sebastian City Council and in cooperation with the Senior Resource Association, Go Line Indian River Transit, do hereby proclaim June 18th as Dump the Pump Day. Maybe we can fast forward that, have people dump the pump this, this week, hopefully, um, uh, in Sebastian and encourage our citizens to use public transportation to save money, help the environment, and improve our quality of life. So uh, this is for you, Karen. Thank you. <laughs> and I know more and more people are using it. I see them all the time. Yes. Thank you very much and uh, for recognizing it. Yes, Dump the Pump National Day was uh, June 18th, which was last week. And uh, we did celebrate by having a number of different people ride the transit system. Um, thank you very much for taking the time tonight, even though it's just after the date. But I encourage everyone to use transit on a regular basis. Uh, I know in the proclamation there is a number of big numbers in that. And of course, that's national numbers. Um, but knowing how many trips that we do here on an annual basis and a trip 
trip being a person getting on the bus and then getting off. Um, we're doing over 1.2 million trips on our Go Line bus um, on an annual basis. And for a community of the size of Indian River County of 135,000, uh, we are best practice in Florida for small rural communities with the transit system the way we have it. So thank you for recognizing it and uh, take public transit, please. Thank you so much. Under brief announcements, uh, City Hall will be closed next Friday. That's 7-3, uh, July 3rd. Um, Saturday, the 4th, is our, Nash, or our annual 4th of July Freedom Fest event. And at 7 a.m., that'll be Saturday week. Uh, there's a 5K run, subs uh, Substance Abuse Awareness Council on In River Drive. 8 a.m. opening ceremony at Riverview Park Veterans Memorial. And the 8.30 a.m. parade start from Community Center South to Riverview Park on Indian River Drive. Festivities all day in Riverview Park and fireworks after sunset. So that's a great day for Sebastian. And we all have thousands and thousands of people that will come here from other communities that aren't as fortunate as we are and have a great July 4th celebration. Any other uh, brief announcements? One great announcement, Sebastian, I was called uh, last Thursday night, Sebastian has been honored by being chosen for the most prestigious award that the um, Florida League of Cities gives out, and that is the Environmental Stewardship Award. So we will be receiving that here in the City Council at some time when that's arranged, and we'll also get a huge trophy that we will be able to display out there for our efforts in stormwater, um, all, the, all the stormwater prevention or things that we've been doing along with the uh, testing of the waters and everything that Sebastian's done. So that's quite an honor for the city. And I really want to thank the council, really, because the council is the, the body that moves us forward. And it was you all that voted to, to do a lot of the things um, that made us able to receive that award. So, um, Mr. Mayor, I do have a quick announcement. Sure. Mm -hmm. uh, just a t attack on to the 4th of July. Um, very often we forget to thank the Lions Club for all the work that they put in on this festival. And every year consistently they have done a super duper job. Um, and, and there are many, many Lions Club members who devote weeks of time and all day to this event. So when you see somebody in the little yellow vest um, who's telling you, no, you can't park there, or please move over here, or how can I help you, thank them for all the work that they do, because it probably wouldn't be possible. We would have to be asking other organizations. They do a lot of work for us, a lot of time and effort, and a lot of money. Uh, they donate money towards the event. So. Thank the Lions Club too. The city, the city is very, very active in this, but but the Lions Club is always there. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Mm, thank you. Uh, we are now going to recess, unless there's any other um, brief announcements. We will recess City Council meeting and convene as the Community Redevelopment Area uh, Agency. So we will now reconvene as the um, Community CRA. Um, a, we need approval of May 27th, 2015 CRA minutes. Move approval. Second. Okay. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, that was unanimous. B, wastewater hookup, Mr. Griffin. Yes, we bring forward tonight a, another application for the wastewater hookup grant uh, program. Uh, River Oaks townhomes, there are 15 units, and we are looking now for approval to uh, convert two septic systems to sewer. Uh, the grant application is for $10,000. Uh, the uh, deeds are in order, the uh, tax information is in order, and the plan is in order, so we are recommend approval. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Mr. Mayor, I'd recommend approval. 
Second. All right, we have a motion and a second. Is there anyone here that would speak on this matter? Um, any, oh, we have somebody that wants to speak? Don't have to, <laughs> okay. Uh, roll call, Sally. Mayor Gilmore. Yes. Vice Mayor Adams. Yes. Ms. Coy. Yes. Mr. Hill. Yes. Mr. McPartland. Yes. Thank you. All right, that's unanimous and we will now uh, reconvene as the, adjourn as the community CRA and uh, I think that was a record. <laughs> uh, we will reconvene as the city council. And next is a consent agenda on our uh, agenda is a consent agenda. Look for a motion. I move approval. Second. Um, roll call, Sally, please. Vice Mayor Adams. Yes. Ms. Coy. Yes. Mr. Hill. Yes. Mr. McPartland. Yes. Mayor Gilmore. Yes. Thank you. Committee reports and appointments. Um, we have a Planning and Zoning Commission. Um, I believe that we have one expired, uh, one regular member position open, and I believe we have one, one person who is, Dave, was it David Reyes, who's in that, wants to continue? Correct. So I think that's pretty much our choice, is to keep him in that position if he wishes to thank him for his service. Uh, Ooh, that, approval. All right. Uh, we're good? We're good. Okay. That's all there is. Okay, uh, number 11 is a public hearing, quasi-judicial, and um, so, Mr. Ginsburg. Yes, sir. 11A is a resolution of the City of Sebastian, Indian River County, Florida, approving the preliminary development plan, PLAT, for a planned unit development known as Sandcrest Subdivision, providing for conflicts herewith, providing for an effective date. 11A is a quasi-judicial public hearing. Okay, we'll open this hearing and uh, city council members, it is time now to disclose any ex parte communication? Seeing none. I have none. Um, Ms. Uh, Mayor, would you please swear in anyone who is going to provide testimony? I have asked, I've asked the city attorney to do that for me tonight. I don't have the language in front of me. Okay. Anybody who will make any presentation on this item to the uh, city council, please rise and raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear that the testimony you'll provide to the city council tonight will be the truth, so help you God? I do. Thank you. All right, at this time, the applicant or agent would make presentation. Good evening, Chuck Meckling with the Sandcrest Development. Um, basically, it is, as you saw it the last time, we were in front of planning and zoning recently with a unanimous approval. The slight modification to the plan was based on some comments and modifications that were brought up with planning and zoning staff who did a very, very thorough look at the project. So I commend them on that mm -hmm. and uh, we're excited about moving it on and I'd be remiss to say that we'd be the first development under the new Sebastian sign there. So if we could read that into the record, it'll be a first. <laughs> and we looked at uh, do another proud and quality development here in Sebastian as Collier Club is coming to an end. We're down to 18 lots in there and so soon it'll be something of being finished and we'll do something new and we're looking forward to it. I don't know if you have any questions. I don't. Anybody else have any questions on council? No. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, staff. Staff recommends approval. All right. At this time, I would open the floor for anyone in favor of the request. Anyone wishing to speak for this project? Now would be the time. Okay. Um, I will now, seeing no one, I'll open the floor for anyone who would be opposing this request. Don't see anyone there. Um, don't think there was any issues that the applicant has to respond to. Um, staff can summarize the request if you'd like. 
Uh, this has been well vetted, we believe, with P&Z and also with council. So uh, staff at this time is recommending approval. All right, this time, if there's any questions from, uh, yes. Just real quick Boy. to clarify. Um, in my packet, I received two. Okay, so I am approving the one that was approved by P&Z. No. I, there have been a few versions of the Platt documents. The one that was approved by the P&Z is before you because I kind of, I told the staff that needs to be before you. According to our code, I think it should go from one to the other. But the other one is an updated version. Then I, I need to ask, what are the, what are the changes and the updates that were made on that, that were not available to PNC? Uh, to, uh, to help clarify again, uh, Frank Watanabe, the uh, Community Development Director and, and the City Engineer. Uh, per the PNZ Commission meeting, we <coughs> had some discussions on the uh, preliminary plat and there were some, uh, it was part of also actually written in the conditions. Uh, some of the items that were changed from the original plat to what you have now is kind of like the new versions of the plat, which is going to be moved forward into the construction drawings. Number one was the uh, the right turn lane that was discussed. Uh, as you see onto that site, there's a new right turn lane being proposed on Power Line Road into the site. Uh, in addition to that, there were some changes and some uh, corrections and notes in terms of those an error in one of the stormwater elevations that was corrected as well. Okay. Uh, there was some additional comments that I had regarding changes to some of the typical sections E and F, which was really a, a the cross section, there were some modifications on that one. Uh, there was again uh, some additions to some of the other sections that was shown on the typical sections that we had highlighted per the PNZ. And then uh, again, there was a question regarding the, the, the typical law on uh, page two that was revised per, per our, uh, the planning uh, comments. So those are kind of like, they're all minor comment and changes, but they did change the plan slightly. So that's why if you took a look in really detail between the platted P and Z ones and the one you have as well today, there are some differences. I tried to find the differences. They're hard, yes. And, and I, I gave up. I said, no. <laughs> they're actually more engineering <laughs> changes, you can see. I, I just said, I'm going to ask, so, okay. And, and staff is, is comfortable <laughs> with all the changes. Okay, and, and P and Z, most of them were at P and Z request. They, you incorporated P and Z's request. And the, the, I get it. And That's I'm correct. Happy. So thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I just have a comment. Yes. Uh, I would suggest that Sebastian is very lucky to have this project coming forward. It's nice to see a project that's different than the typical cookie cutter projects that have been done over the years in our community. I'd say it's quite daring because it hasn't been done, but I know the project manager and the engineers who are on this project have, have done their homework on this. and, and and they know that this is something that the city can use, and I trust these individuals to do a great project, so very happy to see this go forward. Uh, with that, I would move approval of uh, resolution R-15. I second. -14. Okay, and uh, I third it. <laughs> I have another can we, I have can, one other comment when everyone else is done. Uh, well, can we, can we I, I think one of, those, one of those changes was uh, that there'd be varied um, paint yeah. schemes, I think, was one of the one of the things that was changed in planning and zoning. Was that not correct, Mr. Watanabe? Uh, repeat that again, sir? I thought that when I remember reading through this that one of the changes that was brought up were minor alterations was that the, the paint schemes were to be a little bit more varied. Than, that is correct. And, and sometimes you see, you go into a, a, a subdivisions and they're all the same bland, you know, Sahara colors and it's kind of hard to tell one from another. So. Uh, I, I was happy to see that. Oh, and that's what I was just going to ask, because that's come up before. And we've had other places where we put the non-monotonous clause in there, and it didn't happen. Can we really, really, really try hard this time? I want to believe that it's going to happen. I'm not sure how we can account for that because you have a buyer comes in and they absolutely want that beige color or just like their neighbor. Um, I'm not sure how you're going to get over that. It's the third house. That's got to be purple. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey, the, we have hopefully a suggestion. If I may, um, when we do our architectural guidelines, we put certain 
constraints in that. So no house next to each other can have the same color roof. They can't have the same body color. It can't be catty corner and be the same as well. So like Mayor Gilmore was saying, you gotta have a rotation of so many homes before that happens. But we have a, we call it our Bible, of those sort of requirements that are part of the community and I'd be glad to share that with you. I'm just gonna hold you to it. I because I, I trust that if anybody can make it happen, you can. And we track that before the house actually, the builder submits a form and it tells us what body color it is, what roof color, and it's a team effort. It's a team effort to get to the end result of what would look appropriate for the community and have a non-monotonous theme as you go down the streetscape. Okay. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Mayor. Just a technical matter. I, it, can the motion include, please, the conditions that are listed on page 79? So moved. Second. Also. <coughs> Thank you. Okay. Vice Mayor Adams, you had a comment? I said, uh, following up on the questions about color, what's to prevent a uh, future owner from painting his house the same color as his neighbor? The homeowners association. What we do is we write that into the association documents so that it's part of the guideline of the community. So when the developer is gone, the bylaws of the community live on much like the laws of the city of Sebastian. Okay. So there's a, a guidebook that is put in place and it's then uh, put into the court system and, and so it's a part of the document of the community. Okay. The homeowners association. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Good comments all. Um, unless there's any other comments, we'll call for roll call. Ms. Coy. Yes. Mr. Hill. Yes. Mr. McPartland. Yes. Mayor Gilmore. Yes. Vice Mayor Adams. Yes. Thank you. All right. Congratulations. That passes unanimously. Is there any unfinished business? Seeing none, we have public comment. Uh, for, first for John. Would come on, come on down, John. Put you first on the list. Uh, City Council Mayor, John Tenrose, 310 South Wimbro. I'm here as the uh, chair for the Parks and Rec Committee. We had a meeting Monday night, the first one we had in two months. Just an update of what happened. I know the big thing two weeks or a month ago was the Frisbee that was discussed in here. It's an unanimous of the Parks and Rec Committee to move forward with the, with the Frisbee golf somewhere. Right now it looks like we're going to be kicking it over to Filbert Park and see what we can do over there. Also, in reference to that. I'm sorry, look, John, what park did you say? Gilbert Street Park. <coughs> Gilbert Street, okay. Uh, if there's any way that maybe somewhere in the future, we are completely built out of Barber Street Sport Complex. We can't do anything more out there as far as sports go. Buying property or annexing property in somewhere, then maybe we can get some more leverage with the youth in the, in the city that we can put some more parks or whatever we have to do in the city. Uh, the skate park reopened. Saturday looks very good. Uh, the bleacher shields hit Barber Street. I know it's been out of the budget. I think Mr. Griffin took it out of the budget. We'd like to see if we can get somehow get that back in the budget somehow. If we could rearrange some money somewhere else and bring it back. The bleacher shields are great. They need them for shade out there at the ball field. They really do. Because the next thing we're probably going to bring it forward to the council is bleacher shields for the skate park which would probably be in a year or so, yeah, so. Can you, like can you explain what a bleacher shield is? It's a big canopy like they have at the splash pad. Okay. To cover the bleachers for shade, yes, yeah. Okay, now the, the bleacher shield we've had like for almost two years in our committee and we'd like to go forward with this. If we can get the money somehow, if we can work with you somehow to get those things done. Also, we're working with the county, the shrubs on 512 with the sidewalk coming in from the west to the east. We're trying to get them cut back because there's a lot of people who ride bikes on that sidewalk that have actually hit the shrubs. They're so close to the sidewalk. So we're working the county to see if they can cut them back. And that was a, uh, say that again. The shrubs on the sidewalk on 512 coming from west to east. West to east. Right. There's a sidewalk with the shrubs. It's like a the north upper. side of 512. Yeah. The north side. Mm -hmm. right. 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 Yeah, yeah. with the yeah. big tall right. tree. Yeah. 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 There's a certain place you can't even see when you're going around the bend. The shrubs are so far out over the sidewalk. 
So that is a county. Wait, wait, you said that they were, people were brushing into them. I've walked I, up and down and I've ridden a bicycle on that. Yeah. There's plenty of room to ride a bike. I'm not sure. Now, as you get to the end, I could understand. Is that what you mean when, when you go? Both ends. You got it, Roseland Road, both ways going west and east. And also, there's some places coming down on the straightaway that they said it, the bucks actually hit the shrubs too. So, yeah. So we're going to. They who? The people who ride the uh, bikes on the sidewalk. Yeah. So, and I have two members on my committee to ride their bikes on the sidewalk quite a bit, and they said it is getting worse. So, I have never ridden a bicycle on that Joanne. path. Joanne. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And a bit also, of a stretch, but. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but I, I have uh, one of my committee members meeting, hopefully, with uh, the county to come out and take a look at it to, to see where we can cut back on those sidewalks, especially when they come on to Roseland Road and exit Roseland Road and go west. Anywhere I'm talking about? Yeah. Mm -hmm. No. <laughs> I'm not buying it, but I'm just one one person sitting. Well, where you That's cross okay. where you cross Roseland Road once you're going at westbound, you got a certain spot there where the shrubs are overgrown on the sidewalk, and then once you get across Roseland Road going west, it's the same problem again. <coughs> well, I think it's good that the, that you're working with the county to get that taken care of. That's a county issue, so yeah. so that they're going to be maintaining that. That's I mean, it's county. So I appreciate you know the work that you and your committee are doing up there. If there's any questions, I'm happy to answer for you. That's all we had. Yeah. Okay. I, I do have one other question sure. for you. When you come and ask me for to go buy property, it would be very, very helpful if you tell me what it's for, because we're not going to just go buy property. Well, so if you have specific things in mind that you need property for, we would better be able to consider I, that. I think 10 years down the road, we're going to need another sports complex here in town because of the growth of the city. And I think what we have out there now is like 17 acres. And that if, that's your baseball fields, your football fields, your skate park, basketball in the back, and parking. So that's about 17 acres. And the only thing I know big enough in the city right now is off a of day drive, which is 30-some acres, but I understand that's a wetland. So I don't think you can do anything with that. So we're looking something probably in the neighborhood of 30 acres anyway within the next 10 years. Okay. Statistics and, and, and more specifics would be very helpful. Okay. Any other Thank questions? You. No. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Any other public input? Seeing none. We're now to item 14A, new business. Presentation by Karen Deagle. She's president and CEO of Senior Resource Association and the Go Line. Come on down. Good evening. Deagle. Thank you. I'm Karen Deagle. Thank you for in introducing me. Um, uh, just kind of a prelude to what I'm going to be presenting to you. The um, Back in, I guess it was October, November of last year uh, at the Metropolitan Planning Organization meeting, um, it was requested that we take a look at the uh, structure of the transit system uh, in the North County, and that would be Sebastian as well as Felsmere. So we formed a work group, and uh, hence since then we have been working through this. Um, so I'm going to give you at the end of this presentation um, some recommendations about structure uh, for transit. Uh, however, in advance of that, I'd like to kind of give you a history of transit in Sebastian. And I am technically challenged sometimes. Is it just hitting this? And we're going to do it. Right. Okay. I'm good. I'm not that technically challenged. Thank you. Okay. So history of the service in North County. Um, first of all, back in 2000, um, there was one route that was a circular route uh, in Sebastian. And this was Route 5. And uh, um, again, it, it circled. It looped around. And the hours of operation at that time were from 8 in the morning to 2.45 in the afternoon. And there was a, um, a, a no service between 12 and 1 o'clock. All of our routes at that time had a lunch hour gap. Um, ridership on Route 5 was 5,000 uh, trips. Um, skipping ahead to 2000, um, or 2003, the, we added Route 9. 
and it connected to Sebastian to the Indian River Mall. That Route 9 still is, uh, is operating now. Uh, it, uh, it does run along 58th Highway, um, or 58th Street, Kings Highway, I should say. And again, you, so you had five and nine operating, and uh, ridership in 2003 popped a little bit on Route 5. It went up to 7,000. Uh, Route 9 was at about 3,000. Again, the hours still remain the same, and there was a, a lunch hour gap. Um, in 2007, um, we added two more additional routes, and this is the Route 10, which went through Sebastian and, uh, and the Route 11, which was the Barefoot Bay to Vero Beach. The Route 10, uh, the, the Felsmere route, as we call it right now, um, it actually what it did is it went, to, or went from Felsmere, and you can see that it went all the way up to uh, Walmart. And this was a route, I think, it, I think the headway time was something like an hour and a half um, at that time. And there was no connectivity uh, with the, um, well, there was connectivity with Route 9, but it was a very long route back and forth. Um, and the Barefoot Bay Route 11, that was a regional grant that we received. It was 100% funding from, the floor, uh, from um, FTA. And it ran from Barefoot Bay to the main hub in Vero Beach. Um, uh, we, that was a grant that we had, I believe it was a three-year grant extended to five years, uh, and it was uh, something that we wanted to try to see if, if it would, the connectivity between Barefoot Bay coming into Sebastian would help um, uh, riders. And as you see, Route 5 again increased to 10,000 now, Route 9 up to 12,000, so your, your ridership is going up. 10 um, re really took off with 11,000 riders, and Route 11 slow going at 6,500. Our, um, again, our first stop on some of the routes was 7.30 uh, in the morning. It varied from 7.30 to 8.30. Uh, again, last stop at 4.45 in the afternoon. And one of the other things that happened is we did eliminate the lunch hour gap um, at that time. In 2010, um, this is where we did our first real major restructuring in the North County. Um, what happened here is that the Route 10, um, the, we split the Route 5 circulator into two routes, so now we had Route 5 and 12. So that would be the, um, on this map, it's, uh, is the purple and the green. Um, that was split, no longer the circulator. Um, the Route 10, Felsmere Route, uh, stopped at the North County Transit Hub, and actually the Transit Hub, North County Transit Hub, was formed at that time. Um, again, as, um, as you know, our system, our whole system is built on the spoke and wheel system, meaning that the routes take a half an hour to go from, say, a hub out to the end, and then another half hour back, which equates to a one hour headway. So all of these routes now, um, other than Route 11, uh, in, in Sebastian or in the North County, we're now part of that hub spoken wheel uh, of the hour headway, Route 5, 12, 9, again, 9 getting down to the main uh, campus or the main hub, and uh, Felsmere coming into the, to the uh, main transit hub as well. You can see what that did to our numbers. Um, in addition to that change, we also expanded hours. We are now, we were running from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. And uh, as you can see with the numbers posted there, they, they really, they did pop. Route, uh, Route 11 did increase, but uh, still one of the slower um, routes to increase. In 2012, we added Saturday service, still remaining with the current route. However, the Barefoot Bay route ended. Uh, the grant did run out. Um, we, we did, we did approach um, Brevard County about contributing a certain amount to the, to the uh, grant to um, support their part of it, and they declined. We also went into Barefoot Bay uh, as the taxing district, asked them if they would like to contribute to continue the service, and they declined as well. So at that time, we then um, backed it off and continued to have Route 11, but it ran from the uh, hospital uh, down to the main uh, Vero Beach uh, transit hub. One of the problems with that route is the connectivity. 
And still we have that same problem today in that, again, all of our routes run that half hour, so it's either at one end at, on the hour, at the other end at the other half. Route 11 runs on a 75 minute um, headway. And so um, when it gets to the main transit hub in Vero, there's no one there to meet it. So the connectivity is not there. In 2014, um, again, the, uh, it exists, uh, the routes exist as it is um, today. Um, however, we have expanded hours from 6 a.m. now to 7 p.m. That has increased our ridership again. Um, the only one that was decreasing, though, is the Route 11. Again, it just, it's, it's not working because of uh, multiple reasons that we've determined. Um, again, hours of service, 6 a.m. to 7 p.m., um, no changes. We have implemented the bus shelter program as well. Um, this kind of gives you an idea of the ridership, ridership trend from uh, actually 2007 up to 2014 and you can see and this is just the North County ridership so we're talking the 5, the 12, the 9, the 10 and the 11 and uh, you can see that the numbers are con you know continually to pop each year uh, which has been a nice trend kind of slowing off in the last couple years um, because normally when we, we don't make any adjustments um, it, it stays roughly the same but we've we've had significant growth which has been nice in this North County. This is an overall uh, shot of the system itself and I really want to point out again the service area these are all the different routes um, that we have the only one that's missing right now is Route 15 which is the one that um, actually goes from Oslo Road down to the uh, Indian River State College um, but in this particular year if you take a look um, at your routes which is the, the say the five you can see the increase from uh, 2008 nine year to current year of 13 14 or last year's numbers um, significant increases in fact you had the probably the largest increases overall in the system again the only one that's lacking is route 11 so route 11 challenges we've determined that there's no real connectivity with the other routes in Sebastian area um, the connectivity exists at the south end of the route, but not, uh, um, but not on a, a, a basis of what we need. Schedule does not align with the other routes that I've spoke about. It is a 75-minute round trip for Route 11. Um, a schedule fix would require reducing the length of Route 11. And 2014 ridership on Route 9, um, as you see, was 72,000. And Route 9 is the one route that gets you from the North County uh, hub to uh, Indian River Mall. It's at 72,000 versus Route 11, which is going down US 1, connecting into, um, into the main transit hub, is still remaining over at seven, only at 17,000. Um, I do want to point out that we do have another system up in the uh, North County as well. We do, uh, all over the county actually, it is the community co coach. Uh, community coach is our demand response system. It's our door-to-door -door system. It does complement the GoLine fixed route system. Um, the service area includes all of Indian River County. And so from January to October of 2014, we did 27,000 trips. Um, during that time. And then so I wanted to do an analysis of the 32958 zip code to see where we compare um, and uh, as it stands your population is at 24,711 for the 32958 which is 18 percent of the county population and our community coach trips during that time in that area um, were 7,000 trips, and, which is about 26% of our total trips. Um, so I feel very well aligned with the, the community coach and what we're providing and who's using the system up here. Obviously, um, would love to have more riders, um, but I'm feeling good about what we're providing um, at this point. Um, so going back to why we we're doing this again we wanted to take a look at what can we do to improve the transit system in Sebastian um, 
you know, get more riders? Um, what are we missing up here? So um, again, it was requested by the MPO for this study. The uh, workshops were facilitated with Cutter, the Center for Urban Transportation Research out of USF. Uh, we do use them a lot um, for, for um, our transit efforts. Um, we held three workshops that were conducted between November 2014 and June 2015. Participants in that uh, work group from the North County included um, Council Member Coy and Frank and uh, um, Joe Griffin and uh, Representatives Jason uh, Nunemaker from Felsmere as well and, and a couple people from there. Obviously Phil Madsen, Brian Freeman from the MPO, myself um, and my office, um, my transit uh, manager Chris um, Stevenson. Um, so anyways, through that we had, uh, not only did we just get together as a group, we also uh, sent out surveys and I actually went out and spoke to a number of groups as well to get feedback. Um, in fact, it was the Boys and Girls Club, I went to the Chamber of Commerce here in Sebastian. Um, we all sent out uh, um, surveys to a number of different groups. Uh, we actually put surveys in the utility bill of the Felsmere and got a lot of returns uh, on that as well. So there was a lot of good feedback from the community. I believe, and I, I have copies of that survey, probably the biggest, um, what we recognized out of that um, a lot of the people were commenting they wanted different stops at certain places that we were already stopping at. So that made me understand that we, we need to create more awareness. Um, and, uh, um, but overall it was um, some, some really good uh, feedback from the community. Um, the, we, we discussed different alternatives. In fact, at each of the workshops, we came up with different scenarios and we, we kind of massaged and looked at different ones. So I'm going to present to you what the recommendations were from this group. Um, so here's our current route now. And uh, um, let me see here, I'm just going to. So we have four different routes. Route 10 is the pink, Route 5 is the purple, Route 12 is the green, and Route 9 is the um, yellow. Thank you. <laughs> My color is still... Yeah. <laughs> um, the first thing that we looked at is Route 10 and coming from Felsmere. Uh, one of the areas that we felt that we were really missing is Vero Lake Estates. And so what we've decided that we would like to do and what we are actually going to do, and we've already spoken to Vero Lake Estates about this, um, is to, uh, uh, to go into that area and we'll be removing probably, I think it's like two stops uh, in Felsmere to accomplish the timing. Um, that is not going to um, uh, eliminate anyone from riding the bus. The stops that we chose to eliminate uh, actually were low ridership stops in Felsmere, um, but it gave us enough time to uh, to uh, actually go down 104th or 101st Street and across 83rd, and then back up to Dryden, uh, where we'll have where the transit hub is located. Is there any questions about that particular route change? Then what we've done in, uh, within Sebastian, so what we wanted to accomplish uh, in Sebastian area is to have coverage, frequency, and connectivity. So the coverage part of it, what we were going to do is, and you're going to have to help me out because um, you know your streets better than I do, and Andrea, help me out here too because I know you're very familiar with with what we've um, done. Pay attention, Frank. Yeah, I'm Frank too. <laughs> Can you see this? <laughs> Got it. Okay, so we're, we're wanting to uh, do a little bit of change on the five. The uh, 11 is the one that's gonna have the biggest change. We actually are going to um, continue to have the connectivity to the main campus but we're going to actually divert off of US-1 and bring it in and down. Help me out with these street names because I can't see them on this small thing. Barber it's Barber Street? Okay. Barber Street. It was up Schumann. 
because of our seas. Uh, um, we were able to move the five um, or the the twelve Schumann. and uh, connect a little bit more into the uh, into other streets and and provide more coverage. Any stop that is in yellow are new stops. So we feel that we've got the coverage now. Um, there's still the connectivity um, off of US-1 into the main street uh, or in the main uh, hub. However, what we don't have on that Route 11 is the uh, frequency. We have better frequency um, the interior. What we're going to be doing with Route, route 11 is it will start at the uh, Sebastian um, Hospital and it will come down US-1 and then go into Barber Street, connect uh, a number of different streets, and then end up at the Publix out on US-1, um, where there will be Route 12 as well coming out. So there'll be the two buses connecting at the Publix. Um, that, Thanks. when we talked about the spoken wheel, that itself will take a half an hour to do. Instead of turning around and going back, um, it will continue to go down to Vero to the main transit hub, which would be another half hour. So we're actually connecting better with the hub in Vero because we'll be there at the same time as everyone else. They won't be arriving the 15 minute. But what we're losing out on is um, the frequency because it will be what we'll call a two hour headway. So from going from the Sebastian Medical Center down to Vero Main Transit Hub will take one hour and then one hour back. Um, the only other alternative to this obviously is to create Route 17 which would be the one coming from the Medical Center and ending at the Publix and that would then turn around and go back. That would be on that one hour headway. You would then have, that would be the optimum, which would then give you the coverage, frequency, and connectivity. However, it's an additional route. And with an additional route, obviously, there's the match dollars that go along with that. And um, you know that would be what we would be talking about, is additional funding to have the frequency. Um, we can do this without additional funding by having the two-hour headway with the Route 11. Um, so um, I'd like to ask Frank or um, Councilmember Coy to make any comment that I have missed. Uh, yeah, I'd be happy to jump in a little. This, this took a lot of a lot of thought and we went back and forth and it seems like we'd start one one time and meet the next time and go back to the beginning uh, trying to without having to add financial costs to the city trying to come up with the best way to cover our city the fact remains and I know this Karen will, might dispute this with me but City of Sebastian throughout the city has two buses. We have the five and the nine. We have a bus that comes in from Felsmere and then goes to Walmart, but it's primarily, and that huge ridership is, is a Felsmere asset, and now it's great. It's gonna be bringing people from Vero Lake Estates into our shopping district and, and for medical appointments. So that's, that's wonderful, but the fact is it's really servicing outside of the city. That's okay. The, the hard part is trying to connect people to the bus systems conveniently. So it doesn't take you three hours to get from your house somewhere to Vero Beach. Uh, or over an hour to get to Walmart or an hour and a half. Um, in, in looking at this plan, one, it doesn't cost Sebastian anything. And two, we are trying out some new stops along the way. If this works, I think it might be reason for us to continue down the road to look at perhaps assisting and investing. Perhaps. I'm not committing 
but this gives us a way to see if people are out there that need the rides. This way, we have a direct route, although it's on a two-hour headway, we have a, a route to Vero on US-1, and we have a route to Vero that goes to the main hub, which is quite a long ways away now. Where's the main hub? Uh, it, it's moving. Currently, it's at the uh, um, airport. It's at the airport, yeah, but it's, it's going. going. Another year, it will be over on 17th Street, um, uh, 17th and kind of just a little bit west of US-1. And, and that's quite a ways away. To, to be hooking up to a hub. But we still will have access down that end, the east side of Vero, and we will have access to the mall, the west side of Vero, and to the college. So I am suggesting that we lend support to this. It, this has to go to MPO and it, all kinds of other we places. We do have a process that it does have to go before the MPO as well as because we're making so many changes, um, over 20% of the route may change, then we have to take it to the, um, the Board of County Commission as well. Um, I, I really think this is, is we're, we're picking up, some of the good places we're picking up that I know we need to be, Pelican Island Apartments. We will be going and stopping right in front of them. We will be stopping right in front of this new housing, uh, Mr. Meckling's housing development now, mm -hmm. instead of making them walk a quarter of a mile. It's a quarter of a mile or more, depending on where you live in Sunrise Apartments, to the current bus stop. This way, and if you live way in the back, you're walking a half a mile just to get to the bus stop or more. This way they'll be stopping right in front. So that's one big plus and there is a big market there. We know that. Um, and the other stops which are highlighted on the screen in yellow are new and, and we'll get to see. Is this going to add value? So I'm, believe it or not, I'm pretty satisfied. I think this is a good place to start. I think she actually smiled. Congratulations. Once. I am. Yeah, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Well, That's you know, it, it looks like, to me, just for my two senses, it looks like that the one route that goes from the hospital that circum comes around and hits um, Publix, and then there's another route that goes south takes an hour to get down to, well, it t if you're driving a car, it'd take you over half an hour to do that same route. So to add a half an hour to, for that route, I don't think is out of the question because you're making stops along the way and you're not, it's not a straight shot. But the ridership doesn't sound like it was huge down that quarter anyway. No, it wasn't. In fact, we, th this is going to be a better solution because if, if we do not see increased ridership on it, we would have, I would have probably stopped it from going because we have a certain um, level that we have to maintain. Sure. And if you're putting dollars, I, I'm not going to put dollars towards something that's not working. So I'm, I'm hoping by doing the, uh, putting the coverage into uh, the Sebastian um, on that route that we're going to see it pop. And, and I, I anticipate it popping. And I think that also once they know that there's that connectivity, that extra half hour going into uh, that, and it's going to meet with other buses and transfer, that we might see some uh, more traffic. I, I was amazed coming up here at you know 4.30 how much, tra or pardon me, 5.30, uh, quarter after five or whatever, how much traffic is on uh, coming this direction. Mm -hmm. So I know there's a lot of employees that work, we all know that, that work oh. in, in um, the Vero Beach area uh, and that live in Sebastian. So it would be, be great to get them on the bus. Route 11 was, and, and Council Member McPartland will, I'm sure be able to verify this, has been on the radar at MPO to be canceled for a yes. long time. It's been under, under the gun. And with this change, we might be able to salvage it. And part of the reason it was so unsuccessful before is it didn't link up with anything. It was off schedule. So you got on a bus and got off in Vero Beach and had to wait half hour for your next bus to come, or longer, uh, for your bus to get somewhere. This way, now, you are linking up. The other buses are going to be all lined up down there, waiting. You just get off your bus and get on the next link. So I think that in and of itself, it would certainly endear me to the bus so I don't have to sit there and do nothing. Um, so hopefully, 
She didn't and, get and, home and with we're her asking ice cream. for kind of a buy-in to try it. We're not asking, you know, <clears throat> just for a general consensus that hey, let's try this, and if it passes at MPO, um, uh, then we'll give it a shot. Yeah, Mr. Mayor, I've always been a strong supporter of Go Line. I, I think it's a wonderful service that's provided for, you know, the citizens of this community, and it's great to see that the numbers keep going up year after year due to many of the changes that you've done over the years. So, so you should be very proud of what you've done with Go Line over Thank the years. You. And and I've I've seen it. Uh, I see many more people at bus stops throughout the city every single day. People taking the bus to work that live in Sebastian and work in Sebastian. Right. They take the bus to work. Um, it's great. It's great to see what they can get out to, to the uh, out to Walmart, and my kids love using it to get down to the mall. Wonderful. Uh, so, uh, it's a great service, and I very much appreciate. It. And I've always been in strong support of it. So I, I would definitely think that any of the changes that you feel are necessary to implement to make the product better, I will support. Uh, and I've always supported financially uh, uh, assisting a Go Line. I've always been a supporter of that because I believe that it's a great service to our citizens uh, here in Sebastian. And that would be just the difference between having a really efficient system is the is the match dollars. I have to say that if I, and I'm going to say it if I if I had my druthers of this whole thing, I would love to give you Route 17 up here and have it every like have that one hour headway and then have the one hour headway from the Publix into the main campus and that would be the match dollars that we would require from the city that you've done previously in other years. Um, so if you want the perfect, somewhat perfect system, I would request the dollars. If you want to give it a try and do it the other way, that's, you know, that's really up to you. Going, I'll go on record at this point in time that I am not in favor of expending the dollar. It's between 40 and 60, and we can't get a hard number until we. I tried to pin um, Karen down to a hard number, and it varies depending on the matching dollars and who we're servicing. And we could match Vero. Yeah, yeah, I'm happy to match Vero's dollar amounts, um, and so that's what we. I would recommend that we do. And and if we try this and it does work, we might be in a better spot to go. All right. And I'm, I would probably be more favorable. I think we have our answer. Any other comments or I'm, questions? I'm just amazed at the kindness that was shown between Miss Coy and yeah. Karen. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I've always been a, a big proponent of transit, talked to Karen for years about it. And I think one of the biggest problems is people don't understand there's a big difference between transit and community coach. If you're disabled or have disabilities or something, you need to be on the community coach, which picks you up door to door. Transit is not designed to take you door to door. If you go along and you see the bus stops and where people are stopping, they're prepared. They always bring an umbrella with them. They always come out early, ready to catch the bus wherever it is. You know, I'm just, I'm amazed by the system and, and I think, you know, you guys didn't bring up about you know the technology that they've done on the buses, newer buses that they have they've that app. They've, they've reduced they, the fares too. Exactly, <laughs> yeah. you know, half in half. But they have the app now where the bus and you see the go line on your phone as the buses is traveling, as it's hooking up with the other buses along the routes. I mean, they have not sat on their, their laurels at all. And you know, is you know sometimes you know when I sit here in Indian River and I see the system and I know how hard Karen works with it and how it, she, she makes it to run as efficiently as it can. I sit on transportation boards in Okeechobee and then I'm involved in Martin in St. Lucie County. Their transportation systems, they would kill to have something like we have. St. Lucie, which is, what are they, twice, three times the size of us, they have 700,000 riders on theirs. Actually, and there is a does fare. more than all of St. Lucie County in the year. <laughs> right, and, th and there's a fare associated with that. Martin County, which is similar to us, I think they run 70,000 people. Okeechobee has no public transit. Their community coach line that they have out there, you have to call two weeks ahead and you're still not guaranteed of getting your transportation to an appointment that you had. Whereas, you know, Karen running a community coach, you could call basically the day ahead and, and there you go. So, I mean, she runs a fantastic system. I think if, you know, Andrea and her, they work this out and they think this, I'm, I'm fine with it. Because, you know, I know anytime I've gone to Karen, 
about some ideas or something, she's always open and, you know, doing the best to make it work. So. Yeah. Well, and I think the other value, too, uh, to have you come here is to just explain to some folks that, that are maybe watching this council member or council meeting for the first time that um, the, the community coach is almost free. And, and I, I don't know what the charge, it's like a $2. $2. Um, so that's a wonderful resource for our, our folks that are uh, seniors that, that need to go to the doctors or need to go to what have you. Uh, they can call up and get a ride. And that the go line is free. No fare. So, we, you know, and say it's we, free. Say, we say facetiously that the, the fare's been cut drastically. It's free. It's, you don't get any lower than that, folks. I mean, you can ride that bus and it doesn't cost you a nickel. So um, it's amazing for a community of this size and for a community of this size to have such a wonderful transit authority to fall back on. Your car blows up, you can still get to work. Uh, might, you might be a little bit, um, have to wake up, a little, you know, set the alarm a little bit earlier, but you can still get there. So that's wonderful. Um, but I think that we have our answer as far as from what I can see. We'd like to see how this works and then um, come on back and we'll talk again. Okay. We had a little note that was passed up to me, and I am going to read it because it is kind of funny. Uh, we now have double coverage on Barber Street a little bit. We have so we have a new traffic calming device on Barber Street called the Go Line. <laughs> I think that's pretty. I'll cool. mark that in my uh, portfolio. There that's you good. Go. <laughs> uh, uh, it's true now that if, that we will have double buses up there. Okay. Well, thank you very much, everyone, for your your support and. Uh, um, advice and uh, uh, I'm, I'm very pleased with these and we'll what the process now is a um, as we said we will go before the MPO with it and then from there we'll go to the uh, BOCC I can't see any uh, uh, problems with any of that any challenges and if there are some we will overcome them and then I anticipate within a, a few months that we will be able to start making these changes happen great thanks Thank so you. much All right, that brings us to uh, 14B, resolution number uh, R1515. Yes, sir, this is a resolution of the City of Sebastian, Indian River County, Florida, amending the budget for fiscal year beginning October 1, 2014, ending September 30, 2015, as provided for in Exhibit A, providing for conflicts, providing for an effective date, 14B. Council, what's your pleasure? I move approval of R-1515. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second. Is there anyone from the public that would speak on this? Seeing none, uh, roll call please, Sally. Mr. Hill? Yes. Mr. McPartland? Yes. Mayor Gilmore? Yes. Vice Mayor Adams? Yes. Ms. Coy? Yes. All right, that passes unanimously. We are now on to item number 14C, uh, revise 2016 City Council meeting schedule to accommodate early voting. Ms. Mayo? You're I provided up. what I think is sufficient information for us to get through this very quickly. Um, we have some issues with early voting for 2016, and I thought that rather than wait, let's do it right now and get it rescheduled so that Leslie Swan knows what she's doing for next year because it's mm -hmm. a very important election year. The page, the third page of the agenda packet has highlighted meetings that are conflicts that we need to change. Um, just so you are aware, and I sent you an email today, your charter requires that you have one meeting a month. It's your resolution that you adopt each year that requires uh, two, two meetings a month on the second and fourth Wednesdays. But you're, there's no violation of the charter if you have one meeting a month. But I gave you options all of those months that have conflicts except November. I'm sorry, even November has, has five Wednesdays. So you could either hold the meeting that you are okay with and not schedule another meeting for those months and then call special meetings if needed or you can go ahead and pick one of those other dates. I also provided individual calendars so that you can see how the months run together if you need that as a worksheet. Um, but we need to change some dates or just decide that we're not gonna change them and have one meeting a month. And then in November, we have sort of a double situation. We need to move the first meeting to um, November 16th, I believe, so that we can have certification in time. That will be a lengthy certification process because it's a presidential election. 
So the ninth would not be a good day for a swearing in because we wouldn't have results yet. And then the second meeting would fall on the night before Thanksgiving, which you've traditionally changed. So if you have questions about what I've provided here, let me know. I think I, I think it, we can do this pretty quickly. Well, I think that uh, Mr. Mayor, if I could, yep. I, I think that, you know, it makes sense to just go ahead and uh, keep the, the scheduled meetings uh, that don't have conflicts for those months. Uh, cancel the ones that are conflicted uh, with always the ability to go ahead and call one if necessary. At the time, because who knows what's going to happen at that time. I sure. agree. Second. Uh, I mean, we could, I, I just made notes that we could move, uh, like the, the meeting, we could move the, the meeting in March that there's a conflict to the second. If we needed, if we needed a, too many meetings in March, we could, we could do the first, the first Wednesday in March, move in August, move a meeting to the 31st and a move in November to the 30th if we had to as as alternatives but once again I mean you know there's an election and some of us may not be here and sure. others you know others may want to do something else and and so if, without having the crystal ball to know what we're going to need in March and October and August I, I would agree with Mr. Hill that we should just leave the schedule as it is so that the public and we know and future council members know it's the second and fourth. And then as we get to that time, we have the city manager make the decisions, you know, and Makes suggestions. Makes all kinds of sense to me too, so I'm, okay. I'm good with that. And it keeps it so simple because yeah. my calendars, I mean, it, they go out that far, but who knows? So what I will do for her is I will show the meetings that conflict with early voting to be canceled for city council. <coughs> and there are a few board meetings that are going to have to be moved around, but we'll let the board secretaries deal with their committees on those and staff. But for council, I wanted to just make sure that she knew that this room is available to them and we won't have meetings those weeks. And then for the sake of everybody and, and before, if you were really serious about still retiring next year, which we, we really don't want you to do, uh, but like the first of the year, could you publish for the current, whoever is sitting up here, and, and send it out and say, attention, this is what you was decided, here is the schedule. Absolutely, I'll be preparing a 2016 calendar based on what we do tonight, and it'll be the beginnings of Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Well, that was good. Okay. Um, that moves us to uh, 14D, approve Florida League of Cities items. Um, we need to uh, pick a council delegate to the Florida League of Cities annual conference business meeting. I think uh, Vice Mayor Adams was that last year. And the year before. So you can do it again this year. The year before. Months. I, I would nominate Vice Mayor Adams. He's got experience. You're very popular, right? And Mayor I Adams. couldn't hear if he objected anyway. So. <laughs> <laughs> You've done such a wonderful job that I, I think guess you so. kept that. I'll, I'll take it as a compliment. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I don't know that we have any resolutions to be submitted, do we? None that I'm aware of. And uh, the travel reimbursement, have we done that already, or well, is that something I have to do now? I, the schedule that we have. Uh, we're never really informed until the last minute that we know that some of you are serving on these legislative committees. And so because our code requires us to get prior travel approval, we just were not able to do that. So this sort of covers if anybody is on any of these committees and you go 75 miles or more to any of these meetings, we're covering it. And Mr. Mayor, I'd okay. authorize travel reimbursement for any member who's appointed to an FLC legislative committee. Second. Okay. Take the bus, the goal line. Yep. <laughs> do we need a roll call because it's Monday? Yeah. Why not? Let's Route do it. 18. <laughs> Quick roll call. Mr. McPartland? Yes. Mayor Gilmore? Yes. Vice Mayor Adams? Yes. Ms. Coy? Yes. Mr. Hill? Yes. Thank you. Okay. All right. That brings us to, I think, uh, City Attorney Matters. Mr. Ginsburg. Yes, sir. Nothing tonight, sir. Um, but I would like to, with your indulgence, I would love to have a picture with the city council and the three charter officers with the new seal. Oh. 
I think it would be nice. So that would be we could either do that tonight if anybody has a camera, or we could do it for next time. Oh, okay. Thank you. Good idea. Okay. City Manager Matters. Nothing this evening, sir. Thank you. City Clerk Matters. Uh, City Council Matters. Charter Officer Evaluations in accordance with Resolution R-1208. Was that for this month, this meeting? Yeah. It's on the agenda. <laughs> <laughs> it's in your resolution. <clears throat> it's got to be done in June. June. It is June. It's got to be done in June. I guess well, this will be it, wouldn't it? it. Mr. Mayor, Mayor, I've submitted my evaluations to the charter officers and, and um, we'll be completing discussion with them uh, probably by the end of this evening. So, uh, Mr. Mayor, I have uh, submitted to the charter officers their evaluations. I will say that I'm very happy with the service that, that they provide to this community and my recommended increase would be whatever we're contractually obligated or whatever the, uh, uh, their contracts have with us. To, to provide them. So that would be an increase. Okay. Yeah. I, I, let me add on. I did not recommend any additional increase other than what is provided by their contract. Okay. I think mine are still in my briefcase, so they'll be getting them soon. All right. Um, Councilmember McPartland. Well, I just, you know, go over, you know, I did the evaluations and I sat down with all, all the charter members, of course, you know, that being for at home, Mr. Ginsburg, Mr. Griffin, and Ms. Mayo are the charter officers. You know, I also look on, you know, Michelle Morris, the chief over there, the police, almost like another charter officer, because those are the anchors that we have that are here in our community, and I think they're all outstanding. I might argue with Andrea as far as the rating, because I gave them all fives. I consider each one of those individuals to be an ace, you know, and I got four aces here, and we have four aces in the city, which are, are phenomenal at everything they do. I think they have gotten better every year. I mean, the only concern that I had, and I spoke to each of them about it, was an area of succession. God forbid something happened to somebody and they went down. Who would come? Who would pick up? You know, and, and I've talked to Joe, and, and there's a plan in place. You know, I talked to Sally the other day, but of course, you know, when um, the Sheriff's Office, which has that Advanced Citizens Academy, those are the ones who came forward and, and talked about the emblem being here. They had come a few weeks ago, and we came to the city. You know, half of them went over to the police department. They were showing the ropes over there by Steve Marcinic and, and, and Officer Witt and everybody. They showed them that, and then we took them on a tour here of the council, then up to you know, Mr. Griffin, he gave him his spiel from the city manager perspective, and then I brought him into the clerk's office. And not only did Sally, you know, present, you know, because she knows all the history about Sebastian, you know, but she, you know, I got to see Jeanette step forward and present, and I never saw that before, but that's due to the encouragement that S Sally gives her, as well as Barbara, Barbara presented, and, and I was never more proud because these are citizens coming from throughout the county, and we present like, like nobody's business, the, the way they go forward and present, and, and they're just absolute aces for our city, and we are so fortunate to have them. So that's, that's my part on, on that. We have my other matters now? Other matters now. Okay. All right. I think you forgot me again. Mr. Mayor, again? No, no, I'm you sorry. forgot go me ahead. again. <laughs> Vice Mayor Adams. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, unfortunately, I didn't get to complete my evaluations because I had some issues with the paperwork. So I'll do it orally today and I'll provide paperwork at a later date. But I'll echo everybody else's uh, opinion. We have the best that there is out there. I have nothing but good things to say about all of them. I'm truly thankful that they're here with us. I'm thankful that I've been able to have the opportunity to work with them. And I, like, like uh, Mr. McPartin said, that he just brought up, that's the only thing I could think of, uh, a succession plan. And if they've already spoken about it and they have something in mind, then that's great. But they do a wonderful job for us. And our city, they make us look great every time. <laughs> Thank you. And I would just echo what uh, our Vice Mayor Adams said and uh, uh, Bob McPartland said. I, I agree. Um, kudos to all four of them, all three of them. 
Um, and the paperwork got lost in my briefcase somewhere, but I, I did do it. It's just not been turned in. So I hope I don't get an incomplete on this one. So now it's your turn. Right. No, wait, no, wait, well, wait, let me do a rebuttal because this will surprise Council Member McPartland because I know that not too long ago at a public meeting, I was really upset with um, <laughs> uh, a group that got all aces. So let me clarify, I have no problem acing anybody especially our aceables that we have. And oh, by the way, I did, but I justified it in each and every category. I have no problem telling people they're grand, glorious, and good, and did the job that I expect them to do, which in every case they did, but I justified it with lots of narrative. So, surprise. Actually, I'm not that surprised, Ms. Coy, because <laughs> they're, they're aces here. You know, they it's are. on the other ones when you're getting the exceptional and you want to see a number amount. All I was uh, I say is, is my numbers, you know, I know you want to see, and there was justification. I mean, it's very similar to the military evaluation. You got to have the justification for all in there. Exactly. You don't just throw in a number and that's it, but it's based on the results. And I, and I think they've, you know, far out far some, exceeded any of our expectations some years i only do narrative this year i <laughs> one year i didn't do it at all shame on andrea uh, but uh this year i chose to use our uh our sheet and and narrative uh, so i changed it up okay i'm sorry mr that's oh, okay we have time we're we still have a few more yeah. minutes you got a couple hours right yeah all right well, Fe Felsmere on Friday, July 31st, they're having a getting ahead fair. You know, they're going to have a fair down there. They're going to bring in the Treasure Coast Food Bank is going to bring in the mobile food pantry. And this is open to all, all citizens. Doesn't matter if you're from Brevard County, from Sebastian, or from Vero. You know, and they're bringing in the Treasure Coast Food Bank. They also have helicopter rides. They have a pilot there who's donating his time to, you know, take up the kids from the Boys and Girls Club. I think if an adult comes, they're looking for a couple of bucks. That way it offsets the cost for the kids. You know, they're going to have blood pressure and, and blood sugar checkups there, as well as they're going to have the, the Career Source Research Coast be out there with their Career Center. And the Florida Institute of Technology football team will be out there. You know, but it's, it's open to the public. You know, Felsmere is doing a lot of things in the community to try and uh, raise awareness about a lot of different things. So that's open to the public. I gave it to Sally to put on Channel 25 for, again, that's Friday, July 31st. And then I happened to be at a meeting this morning and they had provided some information on, you know, the Treasure Coast Hospice. They're offering a good grief summer camp for children. They have two opportunities. You know, the, the only, you know, slight difficulty might be one of them is in Stewart, the other one's in Fort Pierce. And they're a week long camp for children from the ages of, I think it's eight, eight to 15, or eight, it might go all the way up to 18. But you know, children grieve differently. And that could be they lost a sibling, or they lost a parent, or a grandparent. But children deal with grief differently than we do, so it's an opportunity for them to attend camp. So you can find out more information by going to tchospice.org, and you can get more information. But I think it's a great opportunity, and I think the camp in Fort Pierce was July 20th through the 24th. And like I said, they, they have, you know, they're a, it's a nurturing environment for the campers to talk and share their feelings about grief and to make new friendships utilizing art, music, adventure activities, and support groups. And it is for children ages 5 to 18. Okay, thank you. I don't have anything tonight. Uh, Vice Mayor Adams. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Just briefly. Uh, the state's budget has been passed, and two things that stood out or that I was made aware of was the governor's veto of the 10 million that was to be available for municipalities for quiet zones. So that's no longer available to us. Mm. 
And uh, another veto that he did was the funding for the regional planning councils. That's 2.5 million that was supposed to be for the regional planning councils that has now gone away. So funding is going to be a, a, an issue for the planning councils. That's all. Okay. Council Member Coy. Just a reminder, since we don't meet, uh, another reminder that 4th of July is on Saturday and it's our premier event in the city of Sebastian. So bring everybody, come on down for the whole day. There's something going on all day long, something for everybody. Um, and that's it. Okay. That's all I have. That's Member Hill. Uh, yeah, just a couple brief things. Uh, it's very difficult to balance a budget sometimes, so sometimes tough things need to be done in order to do that. Uh, but uh, to jump on with what Ms. Coy had said about the 4th of July, I'll be looking forward to spending uh, the entire weekend uh, out on the water with the family uh, that weekend, and then, of course, spending the day of Saturday the 4th uh, in the park, in the parade. Look forward to seeing everyone out there. Just hope everyone's safe, uh, has a safe and wonderful weekend. It's going to be hot, uh, so we're plenty of sunblock, but uh, get yourself out there and let's have some fun. All right. With that, we are adjourned.